Now, I can imagine there was probably a good number of you, understandably so, that after last Monday's episode of Raw, where Big E came, called his shot, and he cashed in, and he became the new WWE champion, you were probably expecting me to be like, off the wall excited and pumping this up and talking about how this was the greatest thing. I'm sure you were. And I understand on a variety of different levels why you would think that. He's a swole dude, buff, and since you guys seem to think that I'm such a muscle mark, obviously, naturally, I'm just going to gravitate to him. Not, not like I'm a character, personality, talker, storyline mark, which has been clearly documented over the years, but whatever. But I get it. If you actually believe that dumb dick stuff, then yeah, you would look and be like, well, I think that would be the type of guy you would like. He's a former D1 athlete, so you like legit athletes? Here's a legit athlete. He's got personality. He's got charisma. You know, sometimes the personality and charisma shows him to me in some cringy ways. I cannot deny that he has it. At least he has it. He has elements of that it factor that the vast majority of the roster, and frankly, the vast majority of wrestling, just doesn't have. That is true. He can cut an effective promo. I've heard him do it before. He's cut some very good ones, some eh ones, and some very cringy ones. But again, I've seen the flashes of the potential of the possibility where there are other guys that have carried the strap once or multiple times that couldn't on their best day. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. He's been around for a long time, so he's not somebody that's been hot-shotted. He's been somebody that's paid his dues, came up through the FCW NXT days. He's a guy that has lingered and toiled around on the roster for a long, long period of time. You know, So those sometimes are guys that I gravitate to in terms of they've paid their dues, they've worked their way up. I like the thought of the progression, and in this case, maybe too slow of a progression, but I'm cool with that. And you know, another big thing about me is I've always hated how the money in the bank winner tends to always cash in in the same cowardly chicken shit, lazy type of way. And yes, like the kind of calling a shot ahead of time and declaring on social media like, hey, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this tonight and I want everybody to see it coming. While to me, isn't as far as I would have gone with that, it is still different than what we usually see. It wasn't him saying that we, I could or I might or you want to tune in to see what happens. He was basically flat out calling his shot and saying he was going to do it. That in and of itself was a bit refreshing. And we all know how much I like refreshing things when it comes to the very stale and stagnant wrestling business, especially WWE. Now, I know a lot of you would be like, oh, this pasty face cucks for his black men wrestlers, so... I you know he's got to be happy about a black man winning the WWE title. Like, yeah. Part of the thing is there's been so few of them that have actually done it. So few of them that have actually been afforded the opportunity. So, fuck you. Yeah, it's exciting. Because it represents a little bit of a change. Not much of a change, but a little bit of a change nonetheless. Much better than all egg white wrestling down in Jacksonville. And then I can really imagine a lot of you being like, oh, not only did the black man win the WWE title, but he beat another black man to do so. Jeff was having him one of them Black Panther moments. Yeah, so what? Fuck you. <laughs> but, I mean, that was, that's something. That's never happened for a company that for years got lazy with shit and was always trying to find ways to make history instead of doing good television or good shows. Like, this is a good story. Like, you had a legitimate, credible black world champion lose the strap to another black man who is now the black world champion of WWE and their raw brand. And not only that, carrying the belt with the WWE name on it, which we've talked about before in its meaning and significance. And most importantly of all, yes, he didn't try to cash in on our tribal chief, the head of the table, Roman Reigns, to win the Universal title, didn't screw up anything there on SmackDown. So yeah, like I get it. You probably would have been expecting me to be jumping for joy and all over the place and all super excited about it. And a lot of those things you called out were true, not all of them, but a lot of those things you could say probably do fit. But here's the thing. 
first, I didn't want this to come at the expense of Bobby Lashley. I certainly as hell didn't want to see that. Why didn't he cash in on Drew, Drew McIntyre? I'm, I'm just saying. I didn't want this to come at Bobby Lashley's expense. I also look at this and I say, you know, at times when I've heard Big E talk, like, I understand what he's saying, and I don't fundamentally disagree to this extent. Like, he's saying, I've gotten to this point, like, I don't want to fundamentally change who I am. Understood. But there is also a natural growth and evolution of character the longer you're around. So no matter what you do, you don't want to do the exact same shit forever. You're going to get stale. See, do, 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 do. the epitome of stale. If you don't want to be like Missionary John, you've got to grow and evolve and change as a performer. But he's wrong in this sense. Like the act that you have, you can still keep and incorporate elements of that. Absolutely when you're a tag team guy, when you're in the middle of the card, like the pressure's not on you as much. You represent something different in terms of your role. But once your role becomes, you are literally the face of the place because you are the champion of that brand, shit changes, the perspective changes and therefore the mindset must change. You have to modify and adjust your approach to being a more credible, more serious franchise player. Because you have a lot more things that you're representing than even as you did as a member of one of the more notable and successful factions in WWE history in the New Day. Like, yeah, you were out doing all types of press junkets over the years and lots of public appearances. That's great and that's true. But you're in this space now. It is different. And you do have to modify, adapt, adjust, and change a little bit. And it concerns me a little bit when I've heard the past couple of years Biggie kind of talking about it, I don't think he quite grasps that or understands that. I hope he does, but I'm not confident that he does. And if he doesn't grasp that and grasp that quickly, it is going to be a problem. More so than that stuff though, like this just epitomizes a lot of things to me with the Vince McMahon, Al Davis-like running of WWE today. This is the epitome of throwing shit against the wall and hoping it sticks. Not necessarily Big E winning Money in the Bank or even Big E cashing successfully in his Money in the Bank opportunity to become WWE Champion. That doesn't feel like in and of itself in a bubble, like throwing shit up against the wall. But the timing and the place and the situation with which you did, yeah, that absolutely completely feels totally ass random. Throwing shit up against the wall. It's the example of not being patient, panicking and saying, oh shit, that's right. We're going up against fucking Monday Night Football. So we got to do something because we're already getting our asses kicked, both in overall viewers and in the demo. You know, Demo Dave, you know what he's going to have to say about it. So we got to do something. You already, we all know this is what happened. Like, we don't need validation. We don't need sources. We don't need biased reporting from a bunch of AEW cucks in the media, wrestling media. We know this happened. Because on the surface, this made absolutely no sense. Why would the SmackDown guy who's been on SmackDown forever all of a sudden just randomly come out and he's calling his damn shot? It just happens to be the week that Monday Night Football Week 1 is happening and he cashes in and he wins the WWE title. Of course that's completely fucking random. And what's really annoying to me is for a guy with that type of run, with that type of length behind him, that a lot of fans do like, a lot of fans did want to see take that next step, here's the opportunity you could have had to have a real WrestleMania moment that even ties into the story of Kofi Kingston doing it, beating Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania a couple of years ago to become champion. And now you've got Big E, you know, especially if you've done what I wanted you to do, which is have him call his shot by actually going out there and saying weeks ahead of time that I'm cashing this in at WrestleMania. I want to face you one-on-one, -on -one, whoever it may be because I want you to know what's coming and I want you to know that I'm going to be at my best so you better be at your best because I'm coming for you and I'm going to beat you. If you fail the power, you see? Like, instead of having that WrestleMania type of moment, which this is the type of thing that would have merited and deserved a WrestleMania type of moment, the type of thing that belongs on your biggest fucking show of the year, your most important single show of the year, you did it on a random fuck-off Raw is exactly what the hell you did. 
Now you've done this where you've made Big E the world champion on your lower watch show out of the two major ones. I'm not as excited about that. So you're giving Big E the platform, but he's getting a smaller platform. I'm sorry, that's not the most exciting damn thing. Not only that, we absolutely know now he's on the shittier show. It's bad enough to be the champion on the lesser show in terms of viewership. You're now the champion on the lesser show with the far lesser ta talent, and in particular, the lesser challengers. Like, if you think about it, we all know, everybody talks about week in, week out, how much Raw fucking sucks. How excited am I really supposed to be about Big E being the face of the place for that crap? On a show with fewer viewers, on a show that feels dead in so many different ways, it's just hard to get really excited about that. And then you think about it and you say, who exactly are the quality opponents you could have for Big E? Especially if they're heel or if they turn heel. You got Lashley, obviously, is the logical one now. Drew. Sheamus. You could do Miz. Maybe. I just listen to how shitty that sounds. Like, Lashley can be good stuff. Heel Drew versus Big E could probably work. Sheamus, I mean, he just did it in the mid-card in the past year. But really, you're going to put Sheamus in that top spot? Miz? Again, could work, but not work very well. And who the hell really wants to see that? So it still doesn't solve for the l problem that you have logistically in terms of the lack of credible challengers. A similar problem that Bobby Lashley ran into as WWE champion. So you're in this place where you might change the face, but it doesn't change the dynamics of the place one bit, other than the fact of the guy that's at the top now is on one side of the character fence versus the other, and that's it. And the picture or outlook doesn't get a whole lot better just because you changed in that place with that face. I go look. Am I still a little excited that a Big E finally cashed in, got his opportunity? Sure. It is, it is exciting in some respects. It absolutely is. But I think I've spelled out pretty well what some of my concerns are about it, what some of my reservations about it, and what are some of the things that are really holding me back from getting all caught up in the moment. I don't know that he has the right perspective and is equipped well enough to actually handle the mantle of being the champion in the way that is required. I hope I'm wrong, and I would like to be proven wrong on that. But even if he modifies or changes his approach a little bit, which usually the one thing about WWE, when they make somebody a world champion, in particular a babyface, they immediately always fucking change him. And a lot of times that's to the detriment of the guy. In this case, with Big E, it might actually help him. So I might have a little less concern about that. The larger concern is, though, he's the champion on the lesser watched show with the weaker ass talent roster that lacks credible challengers and for the next several months is going to continue for sure to be the lesser watched show because you're going up against Monday Night Football. You took this moment that could have made sense to do it a big four pay-per-view, whether that be Survivor Series, Royal Rumble, or most notably a WrestleMania, which is where it feels like it should have belonged. And you threw this shit up against the wall to hope it sticks because you can't plan out anything anymore. That's not exactly something for me to really celebrate. It's just not. So if you are over the moon with excitement still about Big E as WWE Champion, I am not here to rain on that parade to be clear. I'm happy to, to some degree, yes. If you're going to be pissy or shit on Big E being the WWE Champion, if you think he's too much of a clown show or he's too much of a joke character, kind of understand that. I don't fully agree with it because here's the thing. The thing we need out of a world champion in WWE is you need personality. You need somebody that can elicit some type of reaction out of you. You got far too many of these guys that can't. I just wish it wouldn't have come at the expense of Bobby Lashley. But yeah, I, I just... Maybe it's a thing of, because it didn't meet my plan or my vision of what I thought, like it's ruined my enjoyment of it a little bit. But there, I just call out some of my legitimate concerns, like 
It's cool and all the biggies WWE champion for sure. I'm just not as excited as maybe a lot of you are.